Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Mikey, otherwise known as Alpha, and today I am going to be showing you guys the best settings you can use for OBS Studio. Now, keep in mind, this video is not going to be just one settings preset from start to finish. Uh, I am going to be giving some tips onto, and some advice as to what settings you should use depending on your circumstance. Um, and I'm also going to be mentioning some of the factors that can go into live streaming uh, as a whole. What this video is not is this video is not going to be me showing you how to set up your scenes and stream or even switch your scenes or make everything, you know, all professional. This is not that video. If you would like a video like that where I show you how to set up scenes, how to make uh, transitions, how to do all this junk, definitely leave a comment down below, leave a like on this video and uh, definitely let me know. Uh, subscribe, turn on notifications, that kind of junk. Um, and for those who don't know, actually, I have been streaming on Twitch for the last month and a half uh, or two months uh, since this video is being released. Uh, so definitely follow me on Twitch. My link is in the description. Follow me, turn on notifications on Twitch. It's a fun time. Most of my viewers and myself have been having a grand old time on uh, Twitch. So uh, you guys should definitely join us there. But without further ado, let's go ahead and open up OBS. And now that we have it open, uh, we're going to want to get to our settings. And you'll see that I have all my scenes right here. Uh, but the next thing we're going to do uh, is we're just going to mess with our settings. Um, and I'll show you the audio settings much later. But uh, I'm going to be doing a brief uh, run through as to what my settings look like, why I have them like that, and what settings you should use and why you should use them. So uh, we're going to go to File, Settings. Alternatively, you could go to settings in the right hand side as well. And I'm going to start off with the settings that you definitely should have. No question about it. So we're going to go to advanced above normal for our process priority, direct 3D 11 NV 12. If you are using OBS primarily for recording and nothing else, set it to RGB. But if you're going to be using OBS to stream only, and uh, recording is not a priority, use NV12. Color space, you're going to set it to 601, and color range, you're going to set it to full. And then when you're going to go down here, bind to IP, typically you would set it to your IP, but default works just fine. So you're just going to want to leave this alone. You're going to want to check both of these, enable new networking code and low latency mode. Make sure you have both of these checked. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our audio. So for our sample rate, we're going to set it to 48, 48 kilohertz. For the channels, we're going to set it to stereo. For desktop audio, you're going to want to choose whatever headphones, speakers, or whatever setup you're using to listen into your audio or whatever your desktop audio situation is. For the microphone, you're going to want to set whatever microphone you have. You'll notice that uh, I don't have this set to my AT2020. Um, for those in the know, uh, I explained how to do something like this in my how to make your blue snowball sound like a studio mic video. Uh, I might make an update to that. If you'd like an update to that video, definitely leave a comment in the description in, or in the comment section down below. Um, but yeah, decay rate, I'm going to leave it at fast, simple peak monitoring device i'm going to leave it at my headphones and you're going to want to have this checked unless you know what you're doing um, but you're going to want to check disable windows audio ducking and you typically don't want to mess with any of those settings unless you have an idea what you're doing most of the time there really isn't any use to those um, but again everyone's setup varies and now we're going to get to the stream part right here so you're going to choose your service, the server. Typically, you would choose whatever server is closest to you, but uh, your auto is just fine. It typically just picks the one that has the best connection anyway, so you won't really have a problem. For output, now we're going to get into the part of the video where this is uh, where everything kind of varies uh, and it just depends. So for output mode, you're going to want to change it to advanced uh, and you're going to notice you're going to get a few more tabs. It's going to you're going to get a little more. You're going to get a few more options. 
and it's gonna look a little messier, but trust me, I will walk you guys through this. It's pretty easy. Uh, it won't take that long. So for audio track, you're gonna choose number one. And for encoder, you're gonna choose X264. If you have a new NVIDIA card, like, an, like anything past, I would say, like in a 10 series of NVIDIA cards, I would recommend you do NVENC uh, H264, but we'll get into uh, what settings you should use for uh, NVENC. If you don't have an NVIDIA card, that's fine. Uh, I have an NVIDIA card anyway, but I'm just going to be showing you the settings I use for my stream and why I do so. So you're going to want to check this box in for streaming encoder settings, CVR, 6,000 kilobits, and uh, for keyframe interval, you're gonna set it to two. For CPU usage, uh, usage preset, you're gonna set it to faster. Uh, if you have uh, a recent generation processor, uh, the processor that I have is a Ryzen 5 1600. It has six cores and 12 threads. So uh, for the most part, uh, it, it does a good job of handling uh, anything I throw at it. So uh, if you have that processor, anything that is uh, more powerful than that processor, I would recommend setting it to faster. For profile, I'm gonna set, I have it set to high. For tune, I have it set on none. Uh, but for the most part, that's really what you're gonna do here. For recording, this is something that you'll mess with if you want to record with OBS, but this will be a set I don't, I don't should this be a separate video uh i am not going to be focusing on recording settings with obs that is its whole i think this is its whole other video so i wouldn't touch this at all for audio you're gonna want to set it to 128 in track one and the other tracks i would set them to 320 um that's if you're recording but just for track one you're gonna want to set it to 128 128 is perfectly fine for streaming um you don't have that much to worry unless music is the only unless you are a music channel and music is literally the only thing that you need to worry about then i would consider upping this but uh 128 is just fine for any general stream for replay buffer uh i wouldn't check this uh it's really up to you if you want to have replays or anything like that but I don't have this on. Uh, I don't really need it. But again, everyone's setup is different. Uh, okay, so for the bitrate, why 6,000 kilobits per second? Uh, word on the street is that Twitch accepts up to 6,000 kilobits per second, and anything past that, Twitch just downcodes it or down encodes it to 6,000 anyway. So 6,000 is the max that you'll get. It'll be fine. Your stream will look crisp, and you don't have much to worry about. Um, and that's, that's really the whole setup for that. Uh, and, uh, why 6,000 again and why you should use 6,000 or if anything lower. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a speed test. So we're going to go on speedtest.net. I'm going to hit go. And now everyone's internet speed varies, but the most important thing that you need to look at is your upload speed what your upload speed is and what it can handle. So you can see this uh, little speed test is going through. It's just gonna take a moment. It'll finish up real, real, real quick. Come on, take your time. I know you like to take your time. And the key is, is that if you wanna do 6,000 kilobits per second, you wanna have an internet speed that is at the very least 10 megabits per second or higher. Uh, if you have anything lower than that, I wouldn't stream. Um, I wouldn't stream with a uh, 6,000 kilobits per second. I'd stream at like 3,000. Uh, and now, now that we got that out of the way, we're gonna go into resolution. So we're gonna go into video, and you'll notice that I have it set at 1600 by 900. Uh, some something over 720, but definitely under 1080. Now, why do I do this? Well, I have a lot of sources. I have uh, a bunch of things loaded into my OBS. Um, and the reason I do this is because um, uh, I have a big monitor and OBS scales things down and does a lot of stuff. 
uh, already as is. So streaming at 1080p is a little bit out of my range, but streaming at 900p is perfect for me. I think it's perfect for most streams uh, anyway. Uh, and I don't think uh, anyone really needs to go down to 720p unless you really have to. I think 900p is a perfect medium and I think it works just fine. So the thing is, is if you want to stream at a lower resolution, I would not scale it. Scaling it a lot makes OBS uh, work harder to uh, output your streams and it takes up more CPU usage uh, and it'll cause your stream to lag even more. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to have your base canvas resolution the same as your output scale resolution. And for the downscale filter, you're going to want to set it at Lanscos. And your FPS values, I'd recommend it at 30 FPS, 60 FPS if you are a gaming channel, which if you're streaming to Twitch, most likely you are. So 60 FPS is what I'm going to use, um, but you know. Uh, 1600 by 900, Lands Coast, 60. If you want to stream at 720, it would be 1280 by 720. If you want to stream at 1080p, it would be 1920 by 1080. And for general, this is the last thing we're going to be doing. Trust me, uh, you'll see. Uh, this will help you out just a little bit. What you're going to do, I think there's something right here. Okay, here we go. Under output right here where it says automatically record when streaming i would like to leave i leave this unchecked because uh if you don't want to record at all because recording does take up extra extra cpu usage extra bandwidth uh if you have this checked then uh definitely um make sure you have a damn good cpu or damn good graphics card uh, but i leave this unchecked personally uh, you would check this if you want to record your streams uh, while, you know, if you want to record while you're streaming. So if you do highlights and all that junk, you'll have a, a copy locally on your PC that you can edit. But again, this isn't a recording tutorial. This is a streaming tutorial. If you want a tutorial on how to record uh, for, record locally on your uh, PC for OBS, definitely leave a comment down below. Okay. Now we're going to go into the part of the video where I, I'll kind of cave on to what settings you should use uh, if you have an NVIDIA card or and you want to take advantage of that NVENC feature. Now, if you want to use NVENC, which if you have a 10 series or later, uh, or you have anything that's past, uh, a, that's, a, that's, that's a little, it's more powerful than a 980, then I would recommend using the NVENC feature that NVIDIA cards have. So for encoder, you're going to change it to NVENC H.264 new. You're still going to want to have that checked in for streaming service and enco service encoder settings. CBR, you're still going to want to do 6000 kilobits per second. For preset, you're going to want to set it to max quality or whichever, whichever quality you need to for your graphics card. For profile, you're going to set it to high. Uh, keyframe interval, I just leave that alone. Uh, and I do uncheck look ahead. I leave that alone. Uh, but for the most part, that's what you're going to use. But if you still uh, are just using X264, the settings that I provided for you before in the past, you're definitely going to want to use. Oh, and make sure you don't have this box checked. That's not a good thing. OK, so now that we got all that, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our audio settings. So I'm going to click this little gearbox. Actually, I'm going to go file. Where is it? Edit. Yeah, under edit, you're going to go to advanced audio properties. And all of your audio devices that you want to be on your stream, you're going to want to make sure the number one box is checked just because that was the box that we checked for streaming. So uh, OBS is going to look to this number one channel uh, when they want to stream. Uh, but for the most part, that's really all the settings that you need. Um, I'll get into more details if you want to learn how to record and use OBS, uh, you know, just for recordings or you want to use it in tandem with streaming. Definitely leave a comment down below uh, and definitely leave a like on this video if this video helped you out and you had a fun time. Well, I wouldn't say fun time, but, you know, I hope if you learned something, if you learned something new. Uh, but besides that, leave a subscribe, a like, uh, follow me on Twitch. Link is in the description down below. 
And three, two, one, stay sexy. Have yourselves a damn good one. Peace.